نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ايتها الاخوات ايها الاخوه احييكم بتحيه الاسلام تحيه من عند الله مباركه طيبه السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Thank you so much. I'm a bit sorry to start talking at 11 o'clock. I will try to keep it short and uh, try to come to some of the points that I wanted to make uh, this evening, inshallah. And to start with uh, an introduction to what was said, because I have been listening to, all, to, to a lot of talks today. And I was, to tell you the truth, I was very pleased, because what I heard is different dimensions when it came yesterday, for example, talking about uh, our way towards Allah and understanding what it means to please Him and what it means to refuse what He is giving us. At the same time, what we heard today about environment, what we heard this morning with Dr. Uh, Omar Abdullah when he was talking about environment, but talking about agriculture, talking about animals, the way we have to treat animals. And then also something which is important in this talk this uh, evening is understanding what it means to lead a community, what it needs for us to get when we are followers, and at the same time coming right now about the two dimensions, which has the metaphysical dimension with Dr. Said Hossein Nas, and this is very important not to make it simplistic and to understand the profound message that we have to understand as Muslims and then all the dimensions that are practical but at the same time so important when it comes to our relationship to culture, our relationship to liberation, our relationship to our responsibility. So as Muslims, we get it straight from the beginning when we speak about changing the present is really to understand that if we are serious about our religion, if we are serious about the very meaning of La ilaha illallah at Tawheed, which is the starting point of everything, and what uh, Yusuf Islam was saying, saying that someone who is saying, when I understood the very meaning of the oneness of God, uh, this, I understood what Islam meant, and he said, I love that because this was the starting point of my journey. And this is it. No, please. No, no, no. no. Just for the, f the two hours to come. <laughs> Now I will try to get it within 30 minutes, but please just don't clap and just try to meditate and to think with me, not after me, but with me. The point here, what he said is that I loved it because this is the starting point of our journey as Muslims, is to understand what it means when we say la ilaha illallah. And I want to start with this. When the Prophet wasalam received the first revelation and it was all as we are repeating and repeating but we can we need to get it right here as well when it is said that i was a blame the shaitan rajim bismillah rahman rahim akhara bism rabbi kaladi khalaq and then he has to read in the name of his lord but lord is not exactly this the right translation his educator a rab minute terbiya he's his educator read in the name of your educator, meaning by this that your starting point, you are starting with a revelation. Come to the very meaning of revelation. To reveal is to remove what is preventing you to get the truth. Revelation is what? Is the revelation of meaning. La ilaha illallah, the oneness of God is the revelation of the meaning of life. So this is the very meaning of Tawheed and to reveal is this, is a relation of the meaning. Why all this is created and why you are created. What is the meaning? So here revelation is this, is Allah talking to you and telling you the secret of life. So you not only are following a message but you are getting a meaning and the message will be the meaning and this is where we have what was said by uh, Professor Said Hossein Nasr when he said something which is the beginning of everything converting, conversion 
is not only the way you get the message, is the way you change the way you look at the world that at yourself. Converting your sight, converting your understanding. And this is why the very beginning of Islam is about knowledge. Change the way you look at the world, change the way you look at yourself, because at it, it, it was said, Sanurihim ayatina fil wa fi anfusihim. Meaning by this, that the very meaning, the revelation, when you come back to the Quran, and by the way, Every time you come back to the Quran, you re-experience what the Prophet ﷺ experienced at the very beginning. It's a conversion. It's for you to start a dialogue with Allah SWT. So why I'm saying this, because if you want to change the present, you may have to ask yourself which kind of understanding you have of the present. And all the meanings that we had coming from uh, the metaphysics, for example, is something which has to do with the meaning of things. So first is meaning. Allah SWT is telling us, the meaning is coming from what? The meaning is going to come from ayat. Ayat are elements plus meaning. And the ayat, meaning by this, that the ayat are going to lead you towards accomplishing something, understanding something. So the Quran is full of ayat and the world is full of ayat. The universe is full of ayat. So Allah SWT is revealing the meaning. Revelation is upholding. It's for you to look at the world the way it is with this understanding. And the last thing is very important. Everything in Islam has to do with meaning, has to do with science, and has to do with a way. You are going somewhere. You are heading somewhere. To see God, as you know, when he converted to Islam, Garudi said something which was very important at the beginning. He said, to see God means to say my life has a meaning. You connect God with the meaning. So this is where we start our journey. So it's a way. And as it was repeated, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajoin is a way. Go and come back to yourself in order to change the world. So this spiritual dimension here has to do with the way you look at the world, but you don't only look at the world with your eyes. This is your eyes and your intellect. This is your heart. And this is the secret of Islam. Don't look at the world only through your intellect. Intellect is quite important. But you have to get it right. You need to have something which is the knowledge of the heart. And this is why from the very beginning, after four revelations, Allah SWT is putting it right. Saying, Iqra bismi rabbik, meaning read in the name of God, and then noon wal qalami wa ma yassurun. And noon, you don't know the meaning of it. Meaning by this, but the very, very Starting point for you in your journey is intellectual commitment, but at the same time, intellectual humility. Why? Because you are not going to get it all. He knows and you don't know. So intellectual humility is so important. Why? Because people can think that this is your weakness. With God, you know that this is your strength. This humility is the starting point. This is why you say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But when you say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, you are saying two things. I might not be able to make it, but with his help, everything is possible. So, no. So, <laughs> the point here is really about that. It's really about whatever is happening. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ told us. Whatever is happening to you, it's always good. Because if it's good, you say Alhamdulillah. And if it's bad, you say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. From everything that happens, you take, you, you take time to, to try to understand and you draw lessons. So this is where we have really to get it positively from the beginning. You know, Yusuf Islam is here. And he wrote a song called Ya Qawmi, My People. But you know what? My people is all good and you were all supporting him here. 
But remember something, that the people who were first, the more challenging for the Prophet, all the Prophets were their people. They were able to say, whatever you are doing to me, you, respect, you reject the message, but still, because I am with Allah, I'm telling you, my people, ya qawmi, what you don't know is whatever you are trying to do against me, I will take it for good to make it something for you, even against yourselves. Remain positive. Remain positive. Everything which has happened has a meaning, even if you don't know what it means for you now. If you don't know what it means now, it has a meaning. So if you think that by saying la ilaha illallah and to spread peace, you are going to be welcomed peacefully, forget it. It never happened. If you spread peace, you are going to be attacked. If you spread love, you are, being, you are going to be hated by people. If you say salam, people are going to go, go away. If you, you say I'm at home, people are going to ask you, what are you doing here? This is the rule of anything which has to do with the message. And still, don't assess, don't shape, don't organize your life according to what they say, but according to what he is expecting from you. You are not my master. You are my obstacles for me to be better. You are my challenges. And you know what? What I understood from Islam, no one should be a victim. We are not a victim. We are challenged. We are tasted. So we are trying to, to use everything which has happened to go beyond. So this is the starting point. You are hearing so many bad things about, forget about that. That's all positive. You would be sleepy without all what is said about Islam today. And be careful. We are in very dangerous situation living in the West, being happy, having our money coming, 20,000 people. That's all good. But listen to the voices that are challenging you for you to be better. For you not to be the victims of what they think of you, but the subject of what you have to do for him. Allah, wa la ilaha illallah. I think that this is the starting point of what we mean by the revelation. But there is something which is essential in Islam. The meaning is also this. What I'm saying here, implicitly, all what I'm saying is very close to what Professor Jackson was right, saying right now. Which at the end of the day, Islam and the very message of Islam is about liberating yourself. It's a liberation process. Liberate yourself. And first, liberate yourself from yourself, from your ego. Second, liberate yourself from all what the people are saying about you. You have to be beyond the judgments of people. You have to know what you serve. And then you ask yourself, what is the purpose of my life? What are the goals? What do I want to achieve? So this liberating process is to get, to get it right in your mind and to get it right in your heart. But Allah SWT is not asking you to remain the way you are. Allah SWT is asking you to change yourself. Islah nafsak. Change yourself. And then, kun minil muslihin. Be among the people who are reforming the world. Meaning by this, changing the world. So these are, this is the framework. And what was said here by uh, Dr. Nasr is something which, if we want to come to the metaphysics, it could be a very long discussion. It could be philosophy, and it is philosophy, philosophy of life, philosophy of law, and we have an Islamic philosophy of life. We have an Islamic philosophy of law. Of course we have that. But at our level, in our daily life, there is something which could be very simple, and this is the way the Prophet ﷺ was educating the ordinary Muslims. At the end of the day, ask yourself what are the goals of your behavior and actions. Why are you doing what you are doing? What do you want to achieve? Very simple question, but essential. This is the point. Is what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to serve? So this is the starting point. It's a very simple thing, but you will challenge this, the Western sciences, you will challenge the Western understanding, and even sometimes now, the Islamic understanding of things by challenging the goals. 
When some people are coming to me and saying, you know, we have an Islamic economy, I say, okay, sit down and tell me what do you want to achieve? Do you want to achieve exactly the same interests and benefits as the West, only changing the means? I'm sorry, that's not Islamic economy. I'm not, I don't want an Islamic capitalism. I don't want something which is changing the world and being happy because we are doing exactly the same. Competing with the, the economic order by getting the same goals. No, I'm questioning the goals. I'm questioning the ends. So this is something that at the global level we can do and our, at our level as human beings in our daily life we have to do. And this is the very understanding of Islam. What Allah SWT is telling us we know that and we repeat that. That Allah SWT is telling us, I have created man and human beings and the jinn and the human beings only for them to worship me. So at the end of the day, we have to understand the very meaning of worshiping him. You know, sometimes we are asking some brothers and some sisters, are you practicing Muslims? And very often we come to something which is we start thinking that we are practicing Muslim when we pray and when we fast. I would say that before this, in order to understand the very meaning of Tawheed, if you have this relationship to Allah and you are not, you haven't started praying, you are not fasting or you are only fasting and not praying, but in your heart, in your mind, you understand that this relationship with Allah, that He is with you and that you are trying to be good. You are trying to help the people. You are trying to serve your community. This is already the starting point of practicing your religion. Don't be only obsessed with the rules. The rules to be respected is a step. Start step by step. Not forget that we have to do it. This is an obligation. You have to pray. You have to go to that. It's a, a goal in itself. But don't think that you are far from Islam because you don't pray. If there is some light in your heart and you want to do good for people, you are already a practicing Muslim. Come on. Be, no, no. So the, the people who are clapping are the people who are not praying. I quote you now. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's so important. It's so important to start with this awareness and, and be like this with your kids. Be with them like this. It's just, you know, when you are with Allah SWT and you know everything, you know, I'm coming from a family where everything was about Islam. And I was young. And my main obsession at that time, what I wanted to do, I was reading books. And once my father came to me and said, Tariq, life is not in books. And then I was really wanting to do solidarity work. And this was what I wanted to do, to go to South America, to go to Africa, to go to India, where non-Muslims were the people of other faiths, even, you know, I never heard anything which was to ask me first, you have to pray to do this. I never heard anything about imposing onto me to pray. But when I was doing things that were perceived as good for humanity, go. I rediscovered the very meaning of love in Islam in South America with people who are not Muslims. I never heard someone telling me you have to. No, that's not the way. You do good, go ahead. Because you know what? When you do good, you are respecting the goals. One day you will come back. You have to trust Allah sometimes, push the people to do good and you, they will find something. Don't be obsessed with the rules, even though the rules are necessary. It might be that by going through the ends, you will come back to the rules. But our obsession with the rules is pushing us to miss the ends. This is the point. This is the very essence of our daily life. So here we have to worship and the very meaning of our presence is to worship him. And to worship is first, to respect, as it was said and repeated here, nature. Is to respect ourselves. Is to respect what is around us. And then, there is another thing which is important. 
to worship and to respect. How are you going to do that? We need to reconcile ourselves in our daily life with a, a word that we keep on repeating, but we have to experience it in a more profound way. To worship Allah means that because we are aware of the, the objectives, all our life is based on loving Him and loving His creation. It's a journey of love. But I mean it. I mean it by saying, at the end of the day, the way we deal with species, animals, nature, the way we deal with our neighbors, when you say, Ya Qawmi, you know that you are going to be attacked by some people in your community and your society. But if you say, Ya Qawmi, there is something in the Qawm that is coming from the heart, not coming from the mind, that you belong to this society. And when you belong, this is what you find in the Quran, al birr which is a kind of affection towards people. And this is why we have to go beyond this us versus them, to show your affection and to love, love the people and to love this nature. And this is the way you worship Allah SWT. So it's the state of heart, not only a way of talking. And this is where to change the present, change your perception of the world, change your perception of the people. If you want to change Canada, first there will be no change. You don't convert your way of looking at things. Not being a victim, but loving the people. Worshipping through love and worshipping for love. Which is the way to be a good Muslim today. This is the way with, where, because we are obsessed with our rules, we forget this dimension. And this dimension is, is so important in anything which has to do with our, our presence. But there is another thing. And this is where, when uh, Imam Zaid Shakir was talking about working and doing what we do and, 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 and very, very powerful speech before. This is something which, at the end, first we have to worship. We have to worship through love and we have to worship through contribution. At the end, you are what you give. And this is why we understand you are a, a, a community of the middle path. Why? لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَاء لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَاء What does it mean? To bear witness. What it means to bear witness? To show to the people, to contribute, to be the, the, the living actor of your principles in this world. So this is why we have to, make, to be very practical now. We can keep on repeating, you should do this, you should do that, but at the end, you start. And how are you going to start this? You know, when someone is leaving, very often we see, and we follow in this, the Prophet ﷺ is Fira'ayatillah. We leave you with God's protection. God's protection for you to go. And when you say this to someone, if you understand the very meaning of Tawheed and you're very understanding the, the relationship that you have to God, to, uh, towards God and the relationship that you have with God, there's something which is important here. Is, I mean it. If you want to be effective in this society, we have to repeat something which is very simple. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. You are and you should be important for yourself. One day, you're not going to be judged as a mother. You're not going to be judged as a father. You're not going to be judged as a son. You are going to be judged as you. What have you done to yourself? What have you done with all what you got from Allah and now you have to come back and to respond to the questions? Take care of yourself. Mean, meaning that the revelation when it came to the Prophet ﷺ, it changed his understanding. And from the very beginning it was وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ what, what the, we heard from Surat Qaf right now. Be patient, be perseverant with what they are saying. But how are you going to do this? Take care of yourself. Try to find this strength in yourself. And in this world today, you are here 20,000. To take care of yourself is to take care of your heart. 
And to take care of your heart is really to look at yourself and to know what are your needs. We need tenderness, we need love, we need affection, we need family. You know, I'm seeing people, I'm coming here with my family. Do you, know, do you think that I could be someone without the parents that I had and the family that I have, my wife, my kids? This is so important that you, this is where they are protecting you and by taking care of the family, you take care of yourself because you respond to the needs that you have. And this is the way you have to look at your heart. We have a problem, as it was said by Sheikh Mullah yesterday, he was saying, we have a psychological problem and we think that to talk about our weaknesses is weakness. No, to talk about weaknesses is strength. Because we come back and we are ready to tackle this and to say, okay, look, we have to take care of ourselves. And the third thing is really this kind of communication. We have a lack of communication. We want to change the world. Don't be misled. Don't confuse connecting people on internet with communicating with people in real life. We need much more communication. We need to have spaces where we can talk and listen. Listen to your people and talk to your people. And first, listen to yourself and talk to yourself. This is why from the very beginning in Islam we have is this communication with Allah is the very meaning of worship is to talk to him and to listen to what he's saying. He's talking to you every time you come back to the Quran, every time you pray, every time, every time you stop doing things and just you are with him, he's talking to you. And I think that uh, if we want to change the world, we have to take that time. We have to take this this understanding of what I need as a human being. And this is a liberating process. To take care of yourself in our industrialized world is a liberation process. It's also, we keep on repeating and quoting books, is to take time to read. It's to take time to read the Quran, to read books, to shape your mind. It's liberating your intellect. It's also to take care of your body. One day you are going to be questioned about the way you are dealing with your own self. Be careful. All this is the starting point of an Islamic journey. And this is what we have to show to the people around us. That we take care of ourselves because this is the way we are going to take care of the people around us. And within our family exactly the same. To change the present, to try to change the present means that we have to take, to take time with our, the people that we love. First, to make them feel that they are loved, that you love them, to try to get this kind of communication as well. It doesn't mean that you are always here, and this is something that I'm, you know, experiencing myself, but keep the quality, keep the, 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 the in, in depth in our communication with the people we love. And this is where, as Muslims, we have to be the leading force in the West, for example, in Canada. In the United States of America, people who care about communicating, about listening to people, about getting it right, trying to get the very meaning of what the people have to say. And this is as Sheikh Mullah was saying yesterday, if you don't like the people, if you don't feel that they are you people, if you don't feel that you are connected or communicating with them, it's not going to work. You really have to open up your minds and you open up your hearts towards these people. You need to respect them. You know what you said yesterday, it was so important. Uh, Dr. Omar Abdullah, when he was talking about pigs, and say even the pigs should be respected because this is the creation of God. And at the end, Sheikh Mullah was saying something which is exactly the same. At the same time, you may dislike what the people are doing, but you have to respect who they are. And it's deep, I mean it. It means the way you look at people, you want to change the present, change your sight, change the way you look at the people around you. Stop going out and talking about kofar. You don't know. A kafir is someone who heard about the truth, know the truth and say no to the truth. Do you think that the people around you, they know about the truth? They don't. They don't. So stop talking about them. Stop judging them. And this is something which you want to change the present is the way also we have to change this and starting as ourselves 
dealing also with our, uh, within our family. You know, I came here and I heard about a campaign that is also starting, and it has to do with the family. You know now that 70% of the women that are beaten are very often beaten by some, the, the husband or someone from the family. And we keep on not uh, uh, repeating that in Islam we have to be cautious. We have to put it in a very clear way. Domestic violence, beating your wife or beating your girls, you have to stop that. This is not Islamic. So when I read this, for example, I pledge to never commit, co condemn, or, or remain silent about violence against women and girls. And then I see that there is a campaign about this. I see that when we are talking about changing the way we deal with that, we need to, to start with our family. It might be that within this room, among the 20,000 who are uh, 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 attending uh, RIS, some of you are beating their wife. So if this, all what we are doing, is not pushing you to stop it, is not pushing you not only to stop it yourself, but to go out, and when you see someone, a Muslim, in the name of Islam, doing it, if you are not stopping it or trying to stop it, I'm sorry, all these talks are but talks, nothing else. If you are not going to do this, to stop it yourself, don't beat any wife, any woman. Stop it. That has nothing to do with our religion. And then more importantly, in your society, show to the people around you that you are going to fight against that, that you are not going to accept it, that you are a driving force in Canada, in the United States of America, against anything which has to do with domestic violence. Because we know what it means to be a woman, we know what it means to be a wife, we know what it means to be a daughter, and we know that at one point in the Hadith that is disputed but understood as the very meaning that paradise is under the feet of your mothers. Stop it. Not only stop it, but be vocal. Say something about it. Imam Zaid Shakir got applause when he said that when we come back to Islam and when we come back to history and we come back to the prophetic tradition, the Prophet Isaiah, the way he was dealing with Bilal, they say, in fact, the very essence of Islam is against anything, any kind of racism. Nothing is accepted coming from any kind of racism against black people or against any other ethnicities or religions. We are against this. And you were very happy. And you were very happy to hear this and you are supporting that. Okay, look at that room. Where are your brothers and sisters, black or African-American? Where are they? Why, at that point, we are not succeeding after one, two, three, four generations living together to come together? Why? Who is responsible? At the end of the day, you can always say, I can't do it. I'm sorry. How many people coming from a different ethnic background you have in your life? Muslims or people of other faith? Are you doing the job? Are you opening up? Are you visiting Africa? When you go to holidays, where are you going? Are you going to places where you can deal with other ethnicities? Are you doing it? Are you going to Africa or are you uh, like all the Americans thinking of Africa as the, as the lost continent? I'm sorry. I had to take brothers and sisters in Europe to go to Africa to make them feel there is something happening over there. They are your brothers and sisters in Islam and in humanity. Now you are very happy you say, yes, say it. What if your daughter or your son is coming with a black man or a black woman? When we know today that some of our Pakistani brothers and sisters, Arab brothers and sisters, 
even in my country, Egypt. You are very kind with the Egyptians. I'm going to be a bit critical. That the Egyptians, the Arabs, are not naturally open to black people. Racism is something which is there. Islam is coming to correct the way you deal with your fellow African brothers and sisters. But we mean it. It has to start in your life. It has to start in your daily life, in your family. If you want to be active against racism in Canada, don't talk about the great Islamic values, but show it in your gathering, show it in your daily life, show it in your mosque. And it means that every one of us should do the job. And you have to go beyond the classes. You know, we have a problem of, of, of status. Class divisions, this is real. That some of you, they have the money, they don't mix with people who are poor. We talk about inner cities, we don't go there. We look at the people from far. If Islam has something to contribute, I said to contribute, to give, it's this. It's to question the meanings, the, the meaning, the, the goals, and the goals for us is equality. We want equality, we want the people to be equal, we want the people to be dignified, we want the people to be free, we want to liberate the people from any kind of alienation. So we have to come to this in our daily life. And this is where you, ordinary Muslims, in our daily, your daily life, you have to start with your family. What do you say about ethnicities and races and other religions in your family? How do you educate your kids? How do you go outside? Where are you spending your time? I think that these are also things that are very practical. Not only this, you are very happy. You know, all what I'm saying is very positive because what I'm seeing now is all these people, year after year you come and we are moving. But I think that all what we are doing is good, but we should do more. You know, when someone is coming here with a sheikh and he's converting to Islam, you are so happy. Allahu Akbar. Your past is away, you are a newborn Muslim, Allahu Akbar. What after that? Not all the brothers and sisters are as, uh, are as lucky as Yusuf Islam. Many of our brothers and sisters, they enter into the community and they are lost. They came with La ilaha illallah and they find in the community people who are looking at them as foreigners, not like us, you have to Arabize yourself, you are not a good Muslim, or even completely, completely lost in what is said about them. Are you sure that in your daily life, someone who is coming to Islam is as valuable as you, even if she or he is not famous? Hmm. Because it's easy. He knows it's easy. It was very easy to be accepted by the community, even though it should have been difficult to work with this community. We know that, Yusuf. It's not easy to work with you. You are a very difficult community. Have no choice. But full of power, full of potential, as it was said. And I think that we, on this, what I wanted to say is really look at ordinary, ordinary Muslims. You know when sometimes you walk and the people are not recognizing you, the first way they talk to you, they say, oh, and then, oh, I'm sorry, it's you. Yes, it's me. But the point is the way you were before knowing it was me. That's the problem. So the point is really to come to this in our daily life and to try to, to come to this and let me conclude here with things that we have to do in, in practical way. All these things are our responsibility when it comes to our contribution. You know, we are starting in uh, a center on the uh, Merkaz al-Dirasat al-Tashri'i al-Islami wal-Akhlaq, a center where we are trying to think about Islamic legislation and, uh, 
and ethics. If you want to have, because we want to connect people, ordinary people and specialists. Ulama al waqa wa ulama al nusus, specialists of ulama, uh, scholars of the text and scholars of the context. And all what we are trying to do here, if you want anything to know about anything about this, you go on, on the, the website. There is my website, you will find a, a window where you can click and you will have information about that. But why I'm talking the, about this is really because this is the point, is to, to just as Professor Jackson was saying, to try to get it right. Where do we need the Muslims to work today? To question the, the goals. You know, when, for example, think about that. When, for example, uh, uh, Professor Nasr is saying, we need to connect economics and environment. It's very important, this. Because we are not dealing with money by forgetting the nature and nature and the, 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 the environment where we are living. We need to get that right. We need to understand it's not about getting more money, it's about having a, a stable life between nature and our wealth. This is what we have to do. And what was said, I kept on repeating this for, I've been repeating this for 20 years, and, and uh, Dr. Omar, even before, is repeating this. There is no way for us if we don't respect the environment. We have to work about the goals. So now in your daily life, please start very, in a very simple way. We know that we are people who are eating lots of meat, and, and we are the community which is now driving the market uh, in many ways. We might have to think about that, to eat less meat and to respect more animals. But it means that you have to take this in, uh, into account in your daily life. So about environment, to question the goals. About gender, as I was saying, to, to, to question the goals, men and women in our community. About education, what are you giving to your kids? Which kind of education? So this is something as parents and as students you have to question, you have to come back to this and to try to be very practical on this. Is everything that you are teaching, everything that you are trying to get as knowledge is to ask yourself, it is useful to, for me to help the community and to help the human beings to be better. Education, gender, environment, arts. You know, when uh, uh, we are talking about creativity, there are lots of people here in this room, you can write, you can sing, you can do beautiful things. You can come back to a kind of arts with meaning and ethics. Do that, do that and contribute in this society. This is the way we can dream the future, but this is the way where we change the present. So there are many fields and once again, you are not asked and requested to be scholars but to be Muslims and to bear the message of Islam in, by any means, as Ambassador Shabazz was saying, by any means possible, quoting her father. So the point is that you are, once again, we talked about uh, Malcolm X, Malik Shabazz. And you know what is important in all this? That he kept on repeating the meaning of Tawheed, by serving the people, but there is something which is needed. It's courage and perseverance. You have to be courageous. You have to be ready. Do you think that it's enough to say we believe you're not going to be tested? We are going to be tested and this is our daily life. So I would say that uh, if you understand the very meaning, revealing the meaning, you have to be courageous. So I would suggest to all our sisters, don't accept to be alienated in any way. Liberating yourself means you have to start working, not against men, but in the name of Islam, against any kind of discrimination and alienation. To all the, our brothers, the black and the African-American that are here, don't wait for the Arabs and the Pakistani to open the door. Stand up and do what you have to do. For all of us here, 
Don't wait for the Canadian society to welcome you because they are tolerating your presence. You have to be respected, stand up and show the way. Do what you have to do in all the fields, in solidarity, in arts, in writing, in media, everywhere we need to see you, to see you not having Islam and nothing else, but to show everything without having Islam. And let the people ask who and how are they driven to do that, what they are doing. This is a very important thing. Once I was saying to brothers, I was saying, talk about God without talking about him. I said, what do you mean? And say, you have to do what you have to do and let the people ask themselves, why is he or is she acting like that? Let the people do the job. Let them understand. And don't be shy. At the same time, you speak about Allah, you speak about God, you speak about your principles and let them come. Let them understand and listen to what they have to say. Listen to their fears as well. So this is our presence here. And one last point, really. We are talking about what is happening, and I will talk about this uh, 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 tomorrow, uh, inshallah, about what is happening in the, in the Arab world. This is also something which is important, and I keep on repeating this. Please, Western Muslims, don't forget your responsibility when it comes to justice towards the world. Be the critical Canadian voice in this society by reminding the people that you are not going to forget what is happening, the, the consequences of the economic order, the consequences of supporting dictators, the consequences of forgetting Palestine, the consequences of leaving uh, Iraq the way it is, the consequences of supporting some dictators and then to tell us that we love the Libyan people because we didn't want them to be oppressed while for 40 years we are even helping the government to torture its opponents. Don't be, you have to be the voice for the voiceless. Be the voice for the voiceless. So it means to be courageous. So it means to have this local commitment and this global understanding. And in any situation, please, in any way, when the people are attacking you, they are rejecting you, never forget to be positive. La ilaha illallah means positive. Wa iza khatabahum al-jahiluna qalu salama. Peace be upon you. And we mean it. Peace be upon you. We know it's going to be difficult. No one told us it's going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. It's difficult but we should remain dignified and positive. Men and women together, Muslims with people of other faiths, do the job, question the meanings, question the, the, the goals of things, and do what you have to do. And please remember this, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Just is the last thing that you are listening to tonight. You go back to your room, you go back home, and just think about this. What does it mean to take care of myself? To give time to my heart, to give time to my mind, to give time to my body, to give time to my relationship to Allah. And when I know how to talk to him, for sure, inshallah, I will know how to talk to the world. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.